my cooking game, where you are a fast food worker, trying to save up enough money to go to Antarctica. We left off the first devlog on a pretty high note, I was excited with the chopping system I came up with. But. It was very rough and the other stations needed a lot of work too. So obviously, the main thing I needed to focus on was polishing I up those- I want to work on the art style. Should that really be priority number one? I had a few ideas of where the art style can go, however, I recently started looking at games like Sable again. Not playing, just looking. I find this look to be absolutely gorgeous and very impressive technically. This game is mimicking the look of Mobius, who if you didn't know, is the absolute shit. I think visually, this will be an interesting take on a fast food kitchen, and hopefully give the kitchen a grandiose and ancient feel. So I began with the outlines of course, I stumbled upon the Sobel shader method, which takes the pixels of high contrast and or depth in the scene, and creates a border around them, effectively creating an outline around objects. I honestly gave my best attempt, I really did. But bro, people have already made this, far better than I have, I am glad I tried though, as I was able to modify this shader to better suit what I am going for. I really like how much texture you can feel in Mobius's drawings, so that was my next challenge. I ended up achieving this through normal maps, which are funky looking pictures, that help the computer mimic extra geometry when being lit up. The Sobel shader will pick up on these extra details, and the benefit of using normal maps is I can control the strength, which in turn controls the amount of texture or lines per object. Yet another added benefit to this texture map Sobel shader combo is how reusable the textures are. Take this crab for instance, here is its normal map, probably looks how you'd expect, you can see its head and whatnot, but now look at this table, would you believe me if I told you that this, wood texture, is just the crab's texture? Well it is, and all I had to do was stretch and squash it until it was just lines left and my eyes were happy. This is of course a radical example, but you can imagine how easily I can reuse something like this metal normal map on multiple objects to give it that bumpy and speckly texture. Art style is fun to play with, but what's most important is the game. So let's get back on track. I will go through quickly some small things I did since the last devlog. First was this group grab. I thought it was necessary if I were to be working with many tiny objects, so I wouldn't have to move them one at a time. In Godot you can set an area to essentially be a gravity point, so how this works is if you hold shift on a tiny object, this circle grows and once it completes it marks all the surrounding objects within a specified area, after it does this it turns on the gravity field, this gravity field follows the main object and once you press the drop button it turns off and lets everything fall. Next thing I worked on since last time is the foods. If you watched the first devlog you are probably familiar with the fish and the box I have been showing off. But some new ideas I was working on are the crab and the egg. The egg is simple, if the egg is at a certain velocity before it hits a surface, it cracks open and spawns the egg white slash yolk. I think once I flush out the cooking I will require you to flip it on both sides to cook. The crab uses the same method as the fish. They are seven separate rigid bodies glued together through a hinge joint. And also like the fish, I gave it some life through applying a randomly generated rotational impulse to make it look like the legs are moving. I really like this effect, especially when he is upside down. Next was the ability to rotate objects. I had this fun idea of crab legs being under the crab, so the only way to chop them off is to flip the crab over and chop downward. Meaning I needed to make a way to flip something. I followed this tutorial again. It's pretty simple, if you hold space down while holding an object, your view and movement get locked and any movement inputs you make are applied to the object you are holding. I also thought that maybe it would be cool if there were bowls or something you could use to hold objects before using them. I also made a quick condiment station, it's really not super fleshed out yet, but I enjoy it so far. You can switch from bottle to bottle and shake the condiment out onto a food. 
Though if I were to continue with this idea, I would need to make my collision shapes more accurate, so the condiments don't float in mid-air. Okay, this next thing was a big one. I needed a method for defining food, so when I start diving into the order system, I can read the food properly. I kept it very simple, each item, which extends from a rigid body, has three categories. Food type, part type, and cook type. Food type is a list of all possible types of foods that will be in the game. Part type is a list of all the body parts any given food could be, what I have so far is head, body, and leg. And lastly, cook type is all the methods a food can be cooked, I only have a few right now. I exported these lists, which allows me to easily set these parameters in the viewport. I can now tag everything that is defined as an ingredient with one thing from each of these lists. And it's very easy to add more later without screwing up anything, since all foods inherit from this list. With this simple setup, I can create a placeholder system that randomly generates orders for testing. All I need to do is for each part of the order, select a random number in a specified range, determined by the size of each list. For example, the body part section in my food script only has three options, head, leg, and body, so the randomly generated number can only be one, two, or three. And that number, when determined, requests the corresponding bitch from the list. And this is done for every parameter regarding food. And these are a couple of the resulting orders. Fun! Notice how something like an onion requests a head, I made it so onions can only have heads and nothing else, so the order will never ask for something like an onion leg. Also you may notice, it wants everything to be fried, that's because I want to test one cook method at a time to make sure it's working. Which brings up my next topic. Now that I have something rudimentary in place that requests something random, I can no longer avoid what I assume will be the most complicated slash unpredictable part of the game. The cooking. But. I am tired. I will tackle that in the next devlog.